Hey, welcome to the Vortex Garage. And once again, we're not in the shop, we're here in our computer area. So definitely check out our other video where we did a little bit of an intro and showed the space off. Uh, another thing to point out, remember, we're gonna keep all the car content and restoration stuff and how to's flowing. This is just some supplemental content we'll have in a different playlist. So we hope you enjoy it and you're like us and have a lot of different hobbies. So the purpose of this video, we're gonna focus a little bit on this piece right here. This is an IBM 5150 personal computer. Now this kind of has the distinction of always being referred to as the first PC uh, or first personal computer. Now I tend to like to preface, preface that a little bit and call it more along the lines of the first IBM PC. And we'll expand on that a little in this short video here. But one of the reasons I say that is that prior to this being manufactured, and this was actually released on, in August of 1981, um, prior to that and even into the 70s, there were smaller workstation class computers and even small home-based computers that technically could be called and were referred to as personal computers. So it doesn't really make sense to call this the first PC because there were other things uh, out there. But this, I like to call the IBM PC. And the reason is, this is the first of the x86-based computers that for designed for home use that used the IBM BIOS that was later uh, copied and, and, and kind of changed up uh, first by Compaq. And that sort of led to the IBM compatible PCs that came out in the 80s. Now, if you're not really familiar with this stuff, we're gonna try not to get into the super tech details of this. Maybe we'll do another video later on where we do that. So we'll try to keep it high level. But essentially, this computer runs on x86 architecture, which was uh, not necessarily super common in the day. And it wasn't exactly the first choice of IBM for this, but for the team that led this, they ended up going with the 8088 uh, Intel x86 uh, processor. And essentially, if you're watching this on a computer today running Windows 10 or Linux or even a lot of the Mac-based stuff, uh, what you'll find is that the architecture in the CPUs that we use nowadays on, on modern computers is often still x86 based. Granted that x86 platform has grown and changed and gone the 64 bit and all that good stuff, but it can trace all of its roots back to here. And in fact, a lot of the code and programs that will run on this original PC can still be made to run on modern equipment. Uh, it's a little harder on some of the 64 bit stuff, but there's still definite ways to do that. And some of it will run pretty decent. So that's why I like to call this the IBM PC. This is really the first personal computer that sort of led to what we commonly refer to as the home computer nowadays. Now, of course, phones and tablets and all that stuff, they all have different architectures and there's different platforms out there. But really, that's kind of what I want to focus, to keep it high level, to keep it short. This is really the precursor to what we know as the personal computer, the IBM PC. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this a little bit. We'll We'll take it apart well, in the sense that we'll open it up, we'll let you see inside, and then we'll power it up and do a couple things with it. And again, we'll, we'll revisit this later and, and do some more detailed stuff. All right, so a couple quick points before we grab the camera to do some close-up views of this. Uh, this particular machine, um, when it came out in 1981, first of all, it did not have a hard drive. It just came with a floppy drive and it had an option for two. Uh, the base model would have a green screen uh, monochrome display. Uh, though there was an option for a CGA color and a color graphics adapter. And of course, it comes with the classic IBM keyboard, which is actually a lot of people still like the mechanical feel of those keyboards. So um, interesting to note, though, from a price perspective, uh, this is something to kind of consider with what you can get today. $1,500 was the base price for one of these new in 1981, and that went up to about $3,000 but then shortly after the original models, when they had the color graphics and you could add a printer, it wasn't unheard of to get to the $4,500 range for a package for a, a 5150 with a screen, printer, color graphics, and all that good stuff. And again, thinking you're not getting a hard drive for that money, just floppy drives. So in today's dollars, I mean, that's gotta be hovering around, you know, close to or at the $10,000 mark for a, for a personal computer. So if you think nowadays you go to buy a PC, you get an entry level one, it's a couple hundred dollars. You know, you get a real nice one that can, you know, do top of the line gaming. You build it yourself, you're still spending maybe a grand, maybe less. I mean, if you're going for super top end stuff, yeah, you can probably still hover in the two grand, 2,500 mark. I'm sure there's crazy stuff you can buy, but in all realities, we don't hit anywhere near that price point anymore. 
um, like, like they did back then. So you're definitely getting some really good value these days. So interesting on that. So as we look closer here, one thing you're going to see, I've put this together. This system here is a mishmash of different components. It's been upgraded over the years. This is by no means a mint or early model um, example, but still we'll grab the camera. We'll show you a little bit and talk a little bit about what it has, kind of keeping it high level as we do so. All right, now as you'll see as we do the close-ups, this is a machine I've put together pretty recently. And like I said, it's a mishmash of parts that we've gotten from various sources. Uh, it didn't all come together this way. Um, and we've still got some cleanup work to do, as you'll see. This was a well-used machine um, that's sort of been around and been upgraded. So this particular one, the first thing you're going to notice, this has a pretty classic Seagate hard drive, the ST225 model hard drive. This was not a stock option in uh, this model uh, machine. And in fact, uh, the early power supplies in these, I think they were about 63 watt, could not actually support the hard drives of the day. You had to upgrade the power supply unit. I believe this one still has the stock power supply, but is using a more modern half height drive. So it has a lot less power required to run that. Uh, as a result, it's not running the second floppy disk. So it only has the one floppy drive and uh, it's missing a plate here. Um, so as you can tell, this one's been around the block. It's been worked on. It's not a super early model. I don't remember the exact date code on it, but we might see that when we open it back up. Uh, when I got this, uh, it didn't come with a keyboard or a monitor, so I was able to score the keyboard separately, um, which was cool. And then I was able to locate a IBM 5153 uh, color monitor. Again, still have a lot of cleanup to do on it. But the good news is, is that all this stuff pretty well works. Um, the hard drive itself still functions. Um, it's a little uh, cold tempered, I guess is the right way to put it. If I were to boot this up right now, let me go ahead and do that. What you're going to see when I boot it up, it'll probably fail to read the hard drive. And uh, what I find is if I leave it on for about 10 minutes, that kind of gets everything warmed up in the drive there and uh, just do a reboot on it and it'll work perfectly and, and run. So. It'll be interesting to see, too, how these uh, CRT monitors work on modern digital cameras. It takes a little bit to boot up, so I'll tell you what, we'll do this in real time just so you can kind of see what it was. Let me even take a seat here. Just imagine this is what it was like. You boot your machine up and be waiting. You can see me in the reflective screen there. So eventually, it should post through all the bio steps and we should see that drive light up. It'll also seek that floppy floppy drive. Most boring video ever. So it'll be less boring when we open it up. That's really cool. All right, so there we go. It's seeking the floppy drive. There we go, it's seeking the hard drive. Okay, so as you see, I'll get this seek error on drive C, but if I let it sit for a while and let it run, do a, a quick reboot on it, we'll be in business. But I'm not gonna do that right away. I'm gonna go ahead and power it down. You can see there's actually a little bit of screen burn in here too. So you can tell this is well-used equipment. So by no means is this a mint example, but it's a used example and one that we're using and we run programs on. All right, so here's our 5150 flipped around. And one interesting thing you'll see, of course, the base model 5150s didn't even come with a disk drive or diskette drive. They just had the connector and came with a data set or cassette drive. So uh, that's something that if you don't know what that is, basically you would use a cassette to put uh, programs on. And we've got some to show you here the, in a future video. Anyway, this one you'll see has been kind of upgraded over the years and uh, we'll slide the cover forward. We've taken all the screws off. We'll go ahead and do this one-handed. Kind of move it forward and you'll see what we got in here. All right, so here is our uh, disk drive. Of course, our uh, Seagate hard drive that was installed, all the data cables, and uh, here's the uh, power supply. So this actually, I was wrong, and you can see the last time I've opened it, it's been a while. This is a 200 watt unit, so this is an upgraded power supply over uh, what came in them originally. So again, I was saying if you added a hard drive, you'd have to upgrade the power supply. This particular one has been upgraded over the years. Um, it's been several months since I've had it open. Um, so when we got it, it was pretty dirty inside, so we basically took everything apart, cleaned it as well as we could, uh, of obviously being careful to look out for static electricity. 
Um, but it's otherwise complete and seems to run pretty well. But this is essentially what you got inside. Uh, let's see. So here we go. Um, let me zoom in on this right here. And so one thing I wanted to zoom in really quick on is that 8088 CPU in there, and that's actually an AMD chip. Uh, what I'm not what I'm not 100% sure of, and I need to do a little research, um, especially if we do a longer video on this, is I know they originally sourced the chips from Intel. I don't know if AMD became a secondary supplier, if there was different varieties that had these chips, or if it was a change that the owner of this made at some point during its use. But at any rate, this one does have an AMD variety of the 8088. So that's pretty much in, it inside, um, just to sort of give you a view of what you have. Here's your PC speaker. Again, all your data cables run. You know, there's a fair amount of room in here, but at the same time, this power supply takes up a bit of the space. Um, the uh, disk drive itself, I mean, just look at how big that five and a quarter floppy is um, compared to stuff they have nowadays. So that takes up a lot of room. It's basically a full height unit. Uh, luckily, the drive that they've installed is a half height unit. Um, but again, that's what it looks like inside. Um, so I'm going to close it back up. We'll put everything back together and we'll boot it up. I'll let it warm up a little bit and we'll show you it, it running in action. And then that's pretty much all we'll do on the video. Today. All right, so we got our 5150 booted up. Uh, the hard drive warmed up a little bit. It went straight to command prompt, no problem. So we'll just spend just a few minutes kind of showing you what we got. So we're not running the original PC-DOS 1.0 that would have come with early 5150s. I may put that on or run it off floppy at some point. Um, I do have one that I formatted to put on it, um, but I'm running what came on the hard drive, so it's a later version of DOS. But anyway, of course, we do have some stuff in here. The standard commands were, and of course, we got the good stuff, the games. And let's see if I remember what we have on here. So uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do some blackjack, just because I know that should be pretty easy to exit out of. So again, we do have the color screen, which is nice. And uh, here's all the rules on Blackjack. Let's start off with, with whoops, $1,000. No, it's not running silent mode. I want to make noise. We all like beeps on computers, don't we? All right, first bet, 500 bucks. I don't know. I'm not good at this. All right, let's see. I'm going to want to hit on that. And 16, I'll tell you what, just for brevity's sake, I'm going to stand. And I lost. All right, so next bet, zero to quit. All right, game is over and it takes me back to command prompt. So it is pretty cool that we can play some of the old games on here. A lot of these have been fishing off of old floppy disks that I have. And interestingly enough, those old floppy disks do still work. I even have one here, a little off camera. And uh, we're gonna slide this in to the drive and just show you the drive working. I believe this is one of the, the good ones. I've got a pretty good stash of these that I've collected. And the interesting thing is most of these old floppy disks, a lot of them are formatted and, and had stuff loaded on them in the late 80s, early 90s, and they're still fully readable. Uh, no, I'd say probably about 90% of them have been uh, readable with no errors. So um, that's uh, definitely kind of interesting. So of course, it'll take a little while to seek. So wordplay is on this one. You can play that straight off the heart, the uh, floppy disk. And uh, wordplay is basically... Uh, Oh yeah. Wordplay is basically a take on uh, a Wheel of Fortune. So, come on now, and don't do that on us. So, I didn't hit it that hard, don't worry. All right, so, uh, this is kind of an interesting one here. This uh, was written by someone in San Jose, California. You can also leave email on the PDSE BBS, and there's a phone number. So, definitely some early internet stuff here. So, this game, copyright, or this version, uh, yeah, copyright uh, 1986, the version 1.01 was from July 3rd, 1986. So, again, uh, some cool stuff there. So, can we quit? Escape to quit. All right, and it'll take us back. And, of course, we've still got our blue screen from the game on DOS there, but that's no problem whatsoever. Clear that. All right, so that's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, we're just gonna do some quick stuff, kind of show you. I really think this stuff's kind of interesting. Um, I don't have this one hooked up to the internet or anything like that. I think there's probably methods to do that. I'd like to look at it someday. Um, uh, but, you know, there are things that you can do. Let's go back to the C drive really quick and see what we have. I wanna say there was, on the drive, there was an old uh, software there. So one, two, three is on there. First, I think it was. 
Maybe that's just a, that should be a directory. Alright, maybe it was, was, yep. So I think this was a, uh, so first choice, I can't remember right off the bat, but I think this was like an old spreadsheet software. Uh, or actually more than that. So document, database, report, spreadsheet, or graph. Good graph, all right. So I'm not gonna go into this too much more, but this is just gonna show you, you know, here's where you could have your series and put your labels and generate your graph. Um, so this is some of the old kind of text-based, you know, column-based displays and things like that that you see in that era. So it is very interesting. I think the, the closing point I would make is that some of this old gear, this has been sitting around, not used for many years, been through a lot of users and, and, and work. It's, it's dirty, it's banged up. But this is really well-built equipment and a lot of it still works. And, and that's kind of amazing. And the thing that's really interesting about the 5150 is that this really is the precursor, the first you know, x86 machine that was widely adopted. It kicked off the PC craze, all the PC clones that came after this. Like I said, if you're using a computer nowadays and not on a phone or tablet watching this, then you're actually still using a variant of something that can trace its ancestry directly to this machine right here. So anyway, we'll spend some more time doing some in-depth stuff. We'll show you some of the other gear that we have as time goes on. And of course, we're going to keep the car vids going. But we hope you enjoyed it. And again, this is a quick view of the IBM 5150. See, so yeah, this is pretty much all I do. I play goofy games on these things.